Yeah, I've made it live. Okay, thank you. No worries. So you cooking Mexican food today, right? Yeah, well, we're going to go through a menu, but I do have one thing I'm going to make. What's that? Or assemble. Well, it's an easy Mexican fried ice cream without frying it, actually. Oh. I have never heard of it, although I have heard of Mexican food. It's really tasty and spicy. Yeah, it's a little spicy, can be spicy, but the Mexican ice cream, fried ice cream is not. In Mexico, it's deep fried, but in, huh? uh, in this recipe, it's uh, just an easy way to make it and it's not so unhealthy. So it sounds interesting, fried ice cream. I've never heard of it. Well, I'm not going to fry it there today, but yeah, they it put it in in bread they roll it in bread and and throw it in the deep fryer so you're going to air fry it no i'm not do it's just called mexican ice cream we're actually rolling it into sauteed crumbs sauteed okay crumbs. okay oh shoot which i just burned oh my god yeah oh my god is right <laughs> That's what happens. Oh. Okay, can you pause the can you pause the record button please? Absolutely, I'll do that. Hey, Di. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi. How are you today? I'm fine. And you? I'm very well. Thank you. So I was just getting a few things prepared. Happy Cinco de Mayo to you. And you as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen so we can get started. We're going to take a look at some recipes today and I have a fun dessert recipe to make for you. So sharing my screen. And about now you should see that screen. Do you see my flavors of Mexico slide? Yes. yes. Well. Beautiful. Okay. Let me check one thing. I've got something on the stove here. So I'm just going to slide it off. And we'll be back to that in a minute. So is there anyone who's brand new here to uh, get set up today? 
Yes, me. You are. Okay. Yeah. Well, and your name is, it says Jack, but I'm kind of guessing it's not Jack. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Diane. Diane. Okay, Diane. Well, welcome and welcome to Get Set Up and welcome to my class. I do a number of cooking, food, nutrition related classes. Some are in the kitchen, some are not. And many of you have been here before. Is there anyone else who's brand new to get set up? I'm a Diane, go ahead. I'm a standalone. Well, not necessarily. So, mm -hmm. shy. so it's nice to have you and you'll find that we do have interactive classes like this. This is, this is how we roll. So uh, we're happy to have you. And Thank is you. there anyone here who's brand new to my classes? I think I see some new faces, maybe. I'm new. Okay, who said that? Janet. Janet, okay, Janet. And I'm new, Olga. Okay, Olga. Yes. All right. And of course, I see some familiar faces. Hi, Diane. Hi. And some faces I think I know, but I don't see the faces, so I don't wanna, I wanna make sure. Anyway, glad to have you all back. Glad to have those of you who are new. And we are uh, Get Set Up, a live learning community. My name is Deb Livingston. So I'm your guide for today. And I live in York, Pennsylvania. So for those of you who haven't met me before, I'm over here on the East Coast where it's finally becoming spring-like. And I'm loving that. Uh, I, my background is in corporate, the corporate world. I've spent a lot of years in training and development, leadership coaching. And now I am doing of all things, food and nutrition and cooking online here with Get Set Up and loving it. So happy to be here teaching you what I know and learning from you, which is what really is what is what Get Set Up is all about. We learn from each other. So I'm thankful when you join by camera. That's the best way to participate. It's nice to be able to see faces and know whether I'm hitting the mark or not, you know, and I can always tell by what people are expressions on people's faces, whether it's uh, resonating what I'm saying or not. So that's really perfect when you can join by camera, feel free to unmute yourself to talk. And then also just mute yourself after you're finished talking because then we keep the background noise out of the conversation. Sometimes that can happen when, especially if we have a large group, it can get hard to control. So right now today we've got Joe here as technical support. So uh, Diane, for instance, if you're new, new here to get set up, we always have uh, technical support to help you. And we also have this email address up here, help at getsetup.io. So if you ever have any problems with getting in touch with us or getting signed up for a class, getting into a class, having your equipment work, the help at get set up folks are very, um, very responsive. And I think we'll help you walk through any issues you might have. We are live streaming this class today, so hello to those of you who might be joining by live stream, and please come and join us for a live class. It's nice when we can get more people to participate like, like we'll do today. And uh, the last thing I want to make sure uh, new folks are clear about is that we don't get any kind of financial, um, we don't have a financial relationship with any products or services that we share with you. The, just things that we think you might like that we're sharing. So this is a fun day. This is a fiesta day. We'll be doing more Mexican food as time goes on, but today is about what uh, celebration and maybe you want to even have a little Cinco de Mayo party and you need a little inspiration. Of course, you might not have many hours to get that done, but you might be able to do it later, maybe this weekend. It doesn't have to be on the 5th, right? So we're going to start with some fun things you might not know about Mexican food and talk about some Mexican food terms. And then I'm going to share with you a recipe, a few recipes that you might use for your fiesta. And I have one that I'm going to make for you today. So, or assemble, I should say, I'll show you how to do that. So what brought you today? Why did you come to the Mexican fiesta? Are you planning to have a little fiesta for Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, Lauren, is it Lauren or Laureen? Oh, excuse me, it's Laureen. And right now, as, you're, as you speak, I have pork um, 
uh, I guess it's Cuban pork in the uh, crock pot with mojo sauce mm, sounds and seasonings. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's going along with that? Um, black beans, plantains, and uh, rice. Okay, that sounds like a great dinner. All right, what about anyone else? Yes, Diane. Um, actually, I'm missing Mexico. We've traveled there many, many times. I have my maracas that I brought back <laughs> and candy for today. Um, and so I'm looking for um, this to be renewed because I miss it. Uh, a lot of the travel restrictions um, are not allowing us to go there right now. And the fact that different regions of Mexico have different types of food, it's not the, their food there is not the Americanized Mexican food. It's typically regional food. And, and I think that that's an interesting tidbit. So I'm curious to see the regions that your recipes are from. Okay. Well, that's very interesting because I can't say that I've pinned this down to any particular regions. That was not my focus today. But my focus is actually on determining or part of my focus is on determining what's authentic Mexican and what is not as far as food is concerned. So I like, to, like your thought about regions too, and, and look for that as we go on, because that's so true in so many countries. Italy, for instance, we tend to think of uh, with pasta, and pasta is not a mainstay in all regions of Italy either. So very, very regional cuisine that it, it is good for us to delve into. So look for more. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So let me ask you this. What are your favorite Mexican foods? You can just unmute and shout it out. Chimichangas. Chimichangas, yeah. Enchiladas. Mm, enchiladas. Mm -hmm. Anything with chorizo and pico de gallo. Mm. And chorizo, chorizo sausage. Tacos. Tacos. Do you like soft tacos or hard tacos? Both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you like? Fajitas. I, well, fajitas. I like burritos. Who said fajitas? My sister and I said burritos. <laughs> okay. Wow. I like both of those. I really like fajitas too. Tamales. What, what is it, Juanita? Tamales. Tamales. Mm. Chili rellenos, oh yes, delicious. We are going to have to have more Mexican food classes for sure, yeah. For me, it's all the above that has been mentioned. <laughs> oh, you love it all, yeah, how about it? I know, you're making me, yeah, making me hungry right now. So I have some do you know questions. You can think these through here a moment and then you can just just unmute yourself and answer the question. Here, this food originated in a bar that was just over the border in Mexico when US military wives wanted something to eat after restaurants were closed. Do you know what food that might be? Nachos. You're right, it was nachos, <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> this food means little strips in Spanish, and it was originally eaten by Mexican cowboys in the U.S. A Beef hint. jerky? What is it? Beef jerky? Mm, well, close maybe in a way. So I'll give you a hint. Itas means small. Fajitas? Fajitas. Mm. Fajitas. Yeah, actually it was made from the less desirable leftover cuts of meat, the trimmings and things. So it was more or less a desperation meal for the cowboys. True or false, chili con carne is a classic Mexican dish. False. False. Where does chili con carne come from? Probably Texas. Okay, what are tas tacos de pescado? And they originated in Baja, Mexico. Fish. 
Fish tacos, gross. Fish tacos, yeah. Anybody like fish tacos? I love them. Mm, I like them too. D Diane says, no, I don't like those. <laughs> you know, it's hard to find, we were talking in the last class, a good fish taco out in, at a restaurant. It's kind of hard to find them, but they do exist. And, oops, and in this picture above, what is authentic Mexican? Can you see the picture? Corn. Mm -hmm. This is, well, this is this rice. Is, this is rice, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Anything else? Beans. Beans. Yep. So rice, refried beans and rice are true and authentic Mexican foods and a staple. And we probably, most of us know that. Um, but combination platters are not something you find in Mexico. And cheddar cheese is not something that you find all over a burrito or in enchilada. Mm. They use a different, a different kind of cheese. And so we'll look at that in a little while. And speaking of that, anybody know how to pronounce this? Cortija. Yep. Here, this is the... Uh, Cotija. You did very well on that. So that's... And what is Cotija? Anybody know what Cotija is? Cheese. It's a cheese. The cheese. It's an aged cow cheese named after that city in Mishawakan. More questions about dishes that are authentic Mexican. Chimichangas, okay, this is a true or false. Chimichangas are a classic Mexican dish served during Day of the Dead. True or false? Hello. False. False. You guys are quiet. They yeah, actually let me originated call you back in Amazon, floor, okay? Arizona. Bye. And so it is, uh, Originated in Arizona and two restaurants really lay claim to that. So who knew? You, you love chimichangas. I love chimichangas. Who knew they weren't really Mexican food? Hard tacos are not authentic Mexican food. Is that true or false? True. False. Oh, it's true. They're not authentic. Yeah. Most Soft often in Mexico, we serve, they serve corn tortillas. And the meat that's inside of a typical taco is steak or pork. Here's which of the following is not an authentic Mexican food? Is it chilaquiles, taquitos, or cochinita pibil? Taquitos. Chiquitos. You are right. Invented by a chef at Cielito Lindo restaurant in LA in 1934. <laughs> so here are a few common Mexican terms. And we're just going to go through those. And you can practice saying them if you like. You can take put your microphone, take your microphone off and practice this. But uh, how do we say this one? Mole. 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 And what does mole mean? What is sauce. it? Yeah, sauce. it's sauce. A lot of times mole in Mexico is made with chocolate. Mm. Have you come across that, Diane? Yeah. Yes. Sauce is chocolate. But in general terms, it means simply sauce, which makes this next one make a lot of sense, right? So Guacamole. what is this one? Guacamole. Guacamole. Delicious. That's called delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so how many of you like guacamole yeah yeah one of my favorite things and sauce of the avocado is what it means how about this one carne 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 and it is meat meat and how about camarón what is that i have no That's idea you don't hear as much that's shrimp Mm. Oh, I love it. 
Polo, no, Pollo. Pollo, Pollo. yeah, Pollo, you're right. You pronounce those double L's like a Y. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what is Pollo? Chicken. 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 <laughs> and how about this one? Queso. Queso, and what is queso? Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> and this one? Arroz. Arroz. Oh, rice. Yeah. And what is that? Rice. Yeah, it rice. sounds good like this. What's this one? Frijoles. Frijoles. Beans. Beans. Hmm? Oh, what about this one? Pretty important for Cinco de Maya. Cerveza. 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 Por favor. A cerveza, por favor. And what is cerveza? Beer. Beer. Oh, and somebody talked about this already, Diane. That's yeah. my favorite, pico de gallo. Okay, what is pico de gallo? It's typically tomatoes, um, peppers, onions, and cilantro with a little bit of lime and salt. Yeah, it's just a super fresh type of salsa, delicious. Okay, mm. what's this one? French fries. Papas fritas. <laughs> yeah, French fries, papas fritas. <laughs> and of course, we should know this one. Agua. Agua. Water. 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 Okay, very good. You guys get an A in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> Incidentally, we do have some great uh, classes in Introduction to Spanish. And I think we have a Spanish interest group, too, if you want to develop beyond your basic food skills. So a couple of recipes I'm going to provide for you. And I should have, I should have made a margarita today. It is Cinco de Mayo. I made one at the last class. And uh, I should have made a different one today. So I want to tell you about them. How many of you like margaritas or drink yeah. them or have had them before? Yeah. 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 How many of you like them frozen? Just had two of them today. Oh, that's the best. Have you had two of them today? Yeah, yeah. We, just, we just came from on the border. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds so good. Yes. Well, we all need a margarita on Cinco de Mayo. So do you like the kind that are frozen or you like the other kind? Frozen? Oh. Yeah, so, so I've got two frozen. recipes. Frozen, me too, I think. The last time we had class, I made, oh, I wanna go into this one first. Let's see, I think it's this one. So the last class, uh, I don't drink a lot of uh, cocktails. I'm a wine drinker, but I do like <laughs> margaritas and I've learned that I like, especially like frozen margaritas. But I made this recipe, and this recipe calls for the pretty basic ingredients in a margarita, if I can get to them here. Here it is. Basic ingredients, an ounce and a half of sil silver tequila. And I picked this one because some of the recipes call for a whole lot more alcohol. So I picked a moderate one, but this is authentic. Uh, an ounce of an orange liqueur. So have you used Cointreau or Grand Marnier or Triple Sec? Triple Sec. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Grand Marnier is kind of the Cadillac of the orange liqueurs, but any one of these will work. And you can also use, if you don't like as much alcohol, you can use an ounce of fresh orange juice too, fresh squeezed orange juice. And I see that there's some writing going on. I just want to let you know, remind you that I will send an email out after the class that will have links to all of these website recipes Perfect. and anything else that I am talking about today. So you don't have to write take notes. Yeah, three. And this also has three quarters of a, an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And if you want to make it a little sweeter, some agave ne nectar or simple syrup. When I made it last time, I just used the alcohol. I didn't use an optional sweetener. And I, I mixed it up and poured it in my, in my uh, glass. I put it in a tumbler, shook it around and poured it in my glass with no ice. And I didn't like it. <laughs> but this is a really authentic one. And if I would have sweetened it up, I might've liked it better. So I'll just put that out there. It also doesn't go into one. This serving does not go into one of those big margarita glasses like you see in the restaurant. This makes a much smaller sized glass version. More of the kind that we saw at the top here. More like this. And you can so remind yourself to double. Yeah, what's that? You can double it. Yeah, <laughs> you might have to double it. 
<laughs> especially today, right? Especially on Cinco de Mayo. Okay, so, so that's one. But then uh, when I had the class last time, we got to talking and I was asking if uh, anyone in the group had a favorite recipe. And so somebody did say that they had one. And I wanted to share it, but she said, oh, you know, I just kind of throw it together according to my taste. So just hold this in your head. I don't have it written down anywhere, but she uses limeade. You know, the okay. kind that comes yeah, out of the garden. And she uses that or any kind of limeade and just uses that as her mixer. But here's a frozen margarita recipe. So you might, oops, pick the wrong one. Here's a frozen one that I'm going to, to do next. This looks much more to my liking. And this calls for six, three, now this is making four drinks. So you would have to scale this back if you were only making one or two. So in uh, four drinks, it's six ounces of tequila, four ounces of triple sec, six ounces of lime juice, and then the agave nectar and four cups of ice. Once again, it is going to be um, about the same ingredients here. So if you like your if you like your drinks a little sweeter, you may want to put more of the agave nectar in, or you might opt to go with that limeade that Alberta shared with us when she was here because that'll give you significantly sweeter, a sweeter drink. So what I like to do when I put them in the blender is, is blend them to the consistency I like. And then, and then if I want to, I can sweeten them up a little bit. Add a little simple syrup, that's probably the easiest way. Simple syrup. How many of you have made simple syrup before? Anybody tried that? So if you're making simple syrup, just reminding myself of what the ratio is. It's one to one, one part sugar to one part water. So you bring it to a boil and then you have a, a syrup. It gets a little viscous after you boil it, cool it down, and then you can pour it into your drink to sweeten your drink. And one thing that's very nice about simple syrup is that you can make it taste whatever, taste it the way, taste the way you like. So you can infuse uh, it with mint if you want, or say a mojito, just by putting a few mint leaves in your simple syrup while it's hot. And similarly, you can use basil. Has anybody done anything exciting with simple syrup that we should talk about? Anybody have any ideas? Okay, so Let's say we're deciding to be teetotalers this Cinco de Mayo, or we have kids coming to the party and we want to give them an alternative to drink. We can try an agua fresca. Have you heard of agua frescas before? They're a very popular non-alcoholic drink in Mexico made out of just fresh fruit and water. So the way that you do this is pretty simple. And doesn't it look refreshing? I think the neat part about it, what makes it so festive is when you do that little skewer of fruit on top. And this calls for pineapple and I think we have mango in here, Let me, strawberries, pineapple and strawberries. Let's see if I can get down here. To, sometimes they let me jump right to the recipe. Sometimes not, there we go. So this is four cups of fresh pineapple chunks, a cup and a half of fresh strawberries, two and a half cups of water, and two tablespoons of agave or whatever kind of sweetener you like. I might tend to use a sugar replacement like my better than sugar or allulose or something of that nature just to keep the sugar down a little bit. And so all you do is put all of that together in the blender and puree it until there aren't any chunks left and then pour it through a strainer. If you like to, if you like all those, that fiber in there and that foaminess, you can drink it just that way. But it's really nice when you strain it to get all of that out and just have the pure juice water in, in your glass. And then you can, you can top it off if you like with some seltzer water or more fruit. 
and there are some other options here. This is when you don't strain it. This is the kind of fruit foam that comes to the top. So there are many of these and you can virtually use the same ratios, just change up the fruit. Again, I have another one of these recipes that a learner sent in to me that will probably make its way into another class at some point. That's a watermelon agua fresca. So that's very good. Very refreshing on a hot day. Very, very good for kids and you can dress them up to look very festive, just like a mocktail or a cocktail. Thoughts about that? Anybody ever try that or want to try it? <laughs> I have. You have? Yeah. So what, what fruits did yours have? I've done it many times, but I just put whatever fruits I have, to be honest with you. Whatever you have, and then you strain it? Yeah. No, I don't. You don't? I go with fiber. Yeah. Yeah. It's And it just depends on what you're into. If you're sitting down having a Having a want to have a cocktail experience, right? And also, company, I'd probably strain it. Yeah, yes, yeah, so either way. And how about you, Karen? You said you make them. No, oh, you didn't. Okay, I mis misunderstood. Okay. So here we go with guacamole. Does anybody have a favorite guacamole recipe? This is my favorite. So I'll share it with you. I don't have one of these, which they're very nice to have because if you use a pestle, you can, you can uh, really smooth out the guacamole. But if you don't, a fork works just as well. This is, this is my recipe or a version. I, I modify it a little bit. I'll tell you what I do. But people tell me I make the best guacamole ever. I don't know. I think they're humoring me, but it does get pretty good and I get very hungry for it and they request it. So I guess that's a good thing. This uses two ripe avocados. So how do you know when an avocado is ripe? It's a little bit of pressure, soft, just a little bit. Just a when little soft. Back back soft. Back it looking. starts to look dented in. You probably have black spots in there. Yeah. And, when you put uh, the skin. Yeah. The so, skin is easy to pull away when the skin's easier to pull away. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, so has anyone ever frozen avocados or kept them in the refrigerator? No. No, they actually do pretty well in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. If you buy them and let them ripen <laughs> on your counter and then put them in the refrigerator to hold them at that degree of ripeness, they'll stay for quite a while. And you can freeze them. I froze a whole avocado the other week and got it out and thawed it and then oh. used it right away and it worked beautifully. Now I also had part of it that I left in the refrigerator for a day or so and it it didn't change color terribly and I used it, but it, the texture changed. It seemed to be better when I got it first out of the freezer when it first had thawed. So you can give that a try. Some people have done that, sliced it up and, and frozen it just like that. So you could use, you can experiment and hold your avocados longer. So this recipe has two fresh avocados that I did, I, I uh, use a fork to smash those and then add a little salt. And I like to use Celtic sea salt. You can use any tea salt that you like. This calls for a quarter tea. I always end up using, I taste it because I think guacamole needs salt to taste really good. That's just me. So I add a little more salt. And then this calls for two tablespoons to one quarter cup of minced red onion or green onion, sliced green onion. So you can see it's a big choice there between two tablespoons and a quarter cup. Well, not too, more or less onion. I don't use red onion typically, I used to. Lately I've been using sweet onion because it doesn't stay with me as long as the red onion. So I prefer that. But you can use whatever onion you like really. And then one or two Serrano chilies, or you can use jalapeno. And I would say, start with maybe half a one and see how you like the flavor of it if you haven't made this before. If you like really spicy things, then go for it. But I'd start slow and work up. And then at the end, as you're mixing it all together, 
um, well, you add this tablespoon of lime juice in, that really helps the avocado to mix nicely with the other ingredients for sure. I don't add that until after I've tried to get the avocado pretty well smashed first, then I add that in. Um, and then stir in a couple of tablespoons of finely chopped cilantro. And if you don't like cilantro, you can put parsley in there or leave it out altogether. Little bit of pepper, and if you want, you can add tomato. I would suggest adding that in as you're about to serve it. Don't mix it in earlier because they draw water. And you can't keep up, you can't keep guacamole realistically for that long anyway. It just doesn't taste as good. Even if you can get it to stay reasonably green, my experience is even the next day, it's just not as it's just not as fresh. Anybody else feel that way or? something different. Yeah. Green. Yeah. So, why you have to eat it all. Go ahead. What? I said, that's why you have to eat it all. That's why you have to eat it all. I know. I just told my husband to get some tortilla chips. We're making some guacamole. So he said they were on two, two bags for $6. So he bought two bags. I, I said, you do know they'll give you the sale price if you just buy one. <laughs> no, but you need I guess we'll be eating a lot of guacamole. I better, I better have a Cinco de Mayo party. And then, and then that's it. You can use red radishes or, or ikama to garnish and serve it with tortilla chips. I never, I put a couple of little tomatoes on, but that's a nice garnish idea. So how does your recipe compare? Is it similar? I like mine as unadorned as possible. As unadorned. I like avocado, lime juice, a couple shakes of Frank's Red Hot, and garlic salt. That's it. There you go. Yep. I keep it pretty simple. Yep. I know. I like your recipe, Deb. However, as opposed to using the serranos, I like the jalapenos. Yeah. You know what? I use jalapenos too. I have a local farmer that has jalapenos, and um, one of our farmer's markets is starting this evening. Nice. Great to have that access to. Well, I grow jalapenos and one jalapeno plant can feed a family, feed four families. There are so many jalapenos. So I now have them in my freezer and I use frozen jalapenos for my guacamole as I go through the year. So I have to agree with you, Diane. I like the jalapenos. That's a nice tip because I never thought to freeze jalapenos. Yeah. Now, I don't say that they hold their texture the way a fresh one does. But if right. I dice them, if I mince them and put them in this, it's it's fine. And I do the same with the sweet green peppers, and and I still have some in my freezer from my garden last year. Yeah, me too. They were really prolific last year. It's Thanks. nice to be able to have that through the year. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So let's look at fish tacos here. Oops, or not. <laughs> here we go. So I wanted to get a recipe for fish tacos that was pretty authentic to the Baja Mexico fish tacos. And that's what this is. And it uses a pico de gallo. So this one also has, uh, these, this is a corn tortilla. You could use a flour tortilla. I used a quinoa tortilla just because I wanted to try it. it wasn't bad. Cor uh, it, does, it does not contain solely quinoa, however. I think that I got caught with that and it actually has tapioca starch as a primary ingredient. So just be aware that when you're shopping for things like that, if they jump out at you, so they say a particular ingredient, read the back, read the label to make sure that that's the first thing on the list. Otherwise you're getting a lot of other fillers and it's not really what it says it is. It has a little bit of that in here. This, this is a tilapia. I used cod, you can use any mild fish. Flounder would be good. What I discovered is that it's kind of nice to use a fish that's a little on the flat side as opposed to the fat side. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons why tilapia seems to be favored here. And what we're doing is mixing, oh, let me go here a little bit. We're mixing a little bit of a flour mixture up with paprika, smoked paprika, and black pepper and flour. 
uh, take that, that's not smoked paprika, that's regular paprika, black pepper and flour. And then dusting the fish fillets with that. And then you're going to fry it. It says heat two cups of oil to medium hot and fry your fish in that. You don't need that much oil. You don't have to deep fry them. I put um, a couple of couple of heaping tablespoons of a big spoon mm -hmm. of oil in my of fat in my pan, and I had a lot of fat left over. I just didn't need all of that two cups of oil. But if that makes it easier for you to cook it and move it around, then by all means, use it and then drain it on paper towels. And then you make a pico de gallo that is exactly what Diane was talking about. The peppers, onions, tomatoes, some lime juice and cilantro. And the details are up there in the recipe that you will get. All those colors, I just think that's a wonderful color combination. And here it shows you a little of the sizes that make it nice. And one of the other things that they've done here is seeded, seeded the uh, tomatoes, which can be kind of nice depending upon what you're eating. It can keep it from being too watery if you're making a roll up. Uh, I had cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes because I think that they're the only thing that takes taste flavorful when tomatoes aren't in season. So I didn't see those, it got kind of juicy and I couldn't cut them quite as finely as I might have with the, with the regular tomatoes. And then there, that's all there is to it. And you can put on there, um, you could use a sour cream or you could use Mexican crema. Have you ever used Mexican crema? So what's that like, Diane? It's it, to me, it's a combination uh, across between sour cream and plain yogurt. That's that's the best I can describe it. And you know, your fish tacos, they look really good, although I, I'm not a fan of flouring my fish. I think it takes away the taste. So I prefer to either use my toaster broiler oven or grill mm -hmm. for my fish to put a, make a fish taco together. Then you don't have any of that floury taste. And it eliminates all that oil. I mean, like you said, they want you to put so much oil in the pan. And then one of your steps is to lay it on paper towels to get rid of the oil. So exactly. Yeah, if exactly. you didn't do the oil, you wouldn't have to drain them. Exactly. So, so it's, you're just talking, a, it's just a preference. Yeah. Talking about some ideas, preferences, uh, alternatives for making things more healthy. You know, this, this time through, I was just saying, this is as close to authentic as authentic a recipe as I could find for you. Right. So right. this was um, something that tasted good to me. Now I have a jar. I want to show you the Mexican crema that I have. And I'm really interested in trying this in different. Let me stop my share. Masa. So I'm very interested in trying this oh, in another in the, in another form. Have you tried this brand, Diane? That's the brand that's around my town, Casique. It's very good. So this, when I try it, it it's like this is the thickness. Mm -hmm. And when I taste it now, I, I don't taste any tartness. I taste a taste like heavy cream. It reminds me of the cream that used to come off the very top of the milk, the milk bottles that my grandma used to get right from the farm. She used to oh. scrape it up and make ice cream out of it. Super oh. thick. That's, that's a great, cream. that's a great memory. It is a great memory. So you can drizzle that crema on here. Remember, no cheddar cheese if you want to be authentic Mexican. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Elotes, elotes. Oh, Sandra, I see you have a question. So before we get into oh, elotes. Yes, I never know if there's something I should do to prep the tortillas, like heat them up 
or put them on the flame on uh, my gas stove or just use them right out of the package? Yeah, good question. So anybody want to weigh in on that? What do you do with your tortillas? You want to un unmute yourself there, Laureen? I uh, <clears throat> put mine on the burner just to get that darkness on the back side of it. So it's a little bit more flavorful. You put it on the flame. Mm -hmm. You mean on a gas stove or on a, in a pan or what do you do? Well, I have done it both ways in a pan and I put it right on the burner, but I don't let it stay that long. I just take the tongs, you know, after they begin to get a little bit of, you know, heat to them. Yeah. So do they get a little, do you let them get a little bit crispy or just a little dark? Just a little crispy. Just, you know, you better not take your eye off of it. Yes. Gotcha. So that's, that's one way to do it. Who, does anybody have another way they like to do their tortillas? So if you like a soft tortilla, you can put a damp paper towel on it and put it in the microwave just for a few seconds, just to make them very uh, pliable and soft. That's, a, that's another, another way. Anyone else? I use a skillet and I spray Pam in the skillet and then put them in there and, and um, not actually to brown them so much, but just to soften them and warm them through. Yeah. Doesn't take very long. No, not at all. Does that help, Sandra? Yes, thank you. <laughs> now you have now you have several options, so you can see which one you like best. But none of them are hard to do or take long. So elotes, that was a food term I did not have on the list. Elotes is Mexican street corn, and I spent some time in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico for, I guess I was there two months. And that was something I can attest to being all over the place in, in the town. And it is indeed a street food. And it is grilled corn that's mm -hmm. coated with crema, lime crema, mm -hmm. so what I just showed you, but mixed with yeah. some lime and then with spiced yeah. chili powder and then topped with some crumbled yeah. cheese. So, this makes a really good finger food when, and for summer barbecues, um, just something fun, a different fun way to eat corn on the cob. And now that I think about it, I have some of this cheese in my refrigerator. I wanted to show you what it looks like. Well, I have, I couldn't locate that fast enough, but I do have the queso fresco. And so that, it, it looks very similar. It just tastes different. So the queso fresco tastes much more like what I would say, uh, almost like a mozzarella might taste. It's very mild. It's on the crumbly side when you slice it, just kind of crumbles. And uh, it's something I, I think tastes fine just on its own. The other one is a much sharper flavor and doesn't melt so much. So that's Mexican sweet corn. You might wanna give that a try just for fun. People love it. They were really gathered around buying it when I was in Mexico. And then this last one is the one I'm going to make for you. There's, there's a lado frito, which is a Mexican fried ice cream. And this one is the authentic one. So I'm going to show you the film on this first. Then I'm going to show you an easy dessert to make. So you can watch that while I prepare my crumbs over here. Deb, your video's not showing. Oh, 
Thank you. I'm sorry. I needed. It's to, okay. I needed to share my screen. So you're watching me do my crumbs here. That's all right. <laughs> it's the hardest thing to remember to go back and forth with the screen share. <laughs> all right. Let me start it over. Looks complicated. I think it, they'd be fun to make. Who would have thought about uh, who would have thought about wrapping ice cream in white bread? So there you go, there's Mexican fried ice cream. And now I'm going to show you a really easy version. Do you ever remember, uh, do you ever remember going to cheat the restaurant Chi Chi's? You remember that Mexican restaurant from years ago? So Chi Chi's used to serve a version of fried ice cream. And I came back home one time thinking, oh, I like that so much, I wondered if I could make it myself. And I did find a recipe for doing it, easy Mexican fried ice cream that didn't require any frying. It was a healthy version. And so I made that and I really liked it. I forgot all about it until I was doing this class. And then I went looking for more recipes so that you all could make an easier version of this. And I found that recipe that I used a long time ago. Of course, in modern times on the website now. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I am making this recipe that has, uh, I took ice cream out of the refrigerator and I formed it into balls. I'm going to get that out of the freezer then because I had to put it back in to freeze back up. It was uh, not, it's not always easy to work with ice cream like that. You have to let it get a little bit soft so you can scoop it. And then you mold it. You might want to put gloves on if you're sensitive to cold, but you mold it in your hands until you have a ball. And then you put it on wax paper put it on a pan and put it back in the freezer so that it gets solid again. And then in the meantime, you mix up a cinnamon and sugar mixture here, because what I'm going to do is roll the um, ice cream balls in this. And then I am over here sauteing my outer crust, which is what's emulating that fried crust. And my crust is something very simple. It's just, it's just corn flakes done in the food processor with a little bit of cinnamon and I'm sauteing them in, in a little bit of butter for a few minutes here. So I'm going to get my ice cream out, get my ice cream out of the freezer. And I've already done one of these balls so you can see it. And just to show you, so here's what I've done with the ice cream ball. I'm just going to roll it in here. And sit it back in for the time being, kind of keeping an eye, an eye on my crumbs. They're Are nice you using vanilla ice cream? Yes, this is vanilla. You can, that's traditional. You can use any kind okay. of milk, actually. But it's got that brown, it's got that sugar cinnamon so flat, uh, chocolate would go nicely so 
Let's try to get that covered as well as you can. Not perfect, but just enough cinnamon and sugar on it. And now, actually, I do this a little differently here. Putting these into a deep bowl as opposed to a to a shallow pan, because one of the things you might need to do when you put this in is not only roll it around, but you might have to press it up against. It doesn't do it as nicely as you might hope it would to just roll it. So just pat it on there. Maybe you could use a little more, little wider bowl. I see I'm putting this out over the edge. Of course, I'm hurrying a little bit. But there you go. So it looks something like that. And now I'm just going to show you how you might fix this up for serving. Skated it off the side. Now I'm expecting when you do this, you won't be hustling to get it, get a get in in a class time. But really nice, huh? And then the other thing that you can do with this is use a little bit of. Uh, I'm sure, I have a. How's that look? Nice, nice dessert, easy to make, and it makes a nice presentation. So I'm going to put these back in the freezer quickly before they melt. And I'll finish those up later and we will have those for dessert tonight. So what do you think? Would you give that one a try? It's super yes, tasty. I would. I had somebody uh, take the class who, who said they were going, yesterday they were in another class. They said they were going to do it with the kids last night. So I'm anxious to hear how that worked out. It would be a fun thing to do with children. They'd probably get a kick out of making them. So I'm going to share my screen. That'll about take us to the end of our class today. And we covered, covered quite a bit today in looking at what were some of the authentic foods of Mexico. Cinco de Mayo, did you know, is not necessarily an authentic Mexican holiday. It's much more of a border holiday, a celebration of Tex-Mex kind of thing, or you know, a little bit of United States and Mexico. So it was appropriate to look at what were authentic Mexican foods and what were Mexican inspired foods that really started in the United States. And I hope that you enjoyed these recipes and that you'll be able to use them in the class. I'd love to know if you do. I'd love to see your pictures. If you make a really fun uh, fried ice cream dessert or any, any of these recipes, we'd love to see your presentation. Um, Scott in our guide group teaches food photography and you might have fun taking yeah. pictures of your food creations. And if you do, send your recipes, send your ideas my way. And if you have anything that you would like to even work with me on or have something you've got a passion for that you'd like to 
talk about in class, let me know and I'll get in touch with you and we'll do something together. This is my email address, Deb the guy to get set up .io. My next classes are healthy meals on a budget and let's talk cooking. And uh, yeah, next week I start a series on spring seasonal foods. So asparagus is in the spotlight next week. Um. I'll send you notes. You'll have all the recipes we talked about. It's a good time to give us feedback. I'd love to have feedback on this class. See, tell me what you think. I'm especially interested. Do you like these classes from the kitchen? I do some from my desk. I, I'd like to know how that compares for you. And also uh, view the schedule from your email. You can sign up for another class. You can invite a friend to this class. You can invite a friend from when you sign up for a class. And that's always a, a good thing for all of us. It grows our community, it keeps us all going. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. I look thank forward. you. You're welcome. Look forward to seeing you in another one. Thanks for coming. For those who you, of you who are new, I'm really happy to have met you. It was enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Deb. Bye -bye. Deb, how did your election go yesterday? Our police millage passed, so we still have Thank police you. coverage. Oh, wow. Well, we didn't have an election yesterday. Ours is on May 18th. Oh, yours is later. Okay. Yeah, I'm Good luck still. On, yeah, I'm working on a campaign for, uh, I'm on the campaign manager for somebody who's running locally here, so we're busy. I'm writing notes right now. <laughs> You had, you had mentioned that. I just wondered how yours went. Apparently, I didn't realize they were two different days, but. Yeah, and so you kept your police, do you say? The local police, they they Good. are going to get their funding, so. Great, glad to yep. hear that. Thank so you. some of us still like the police. Some of us do still like the police. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, thanks again. Hey, okay, Diane, thanks a lot. And Diane, if there's ever anything, I know you come to my classes quite a bit. If there's ever anything that you would like to bring that you'd like to see showcased, I'd love to work with you. Oh, sounds great. Thank you yeah. for the opportunity. Yeah, sure. If you have any recipes, it would be fun. Have a great evening. You too. Bye, Diane. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Karen. Karen, thanks for coming again. See ya. Goodbye, Deb. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye, -bye. Joe. Yes. Hey. Is it? I'm looking for my. I liked it. I'm trying to get it off of my screen right now. Yeah, let me.